welcome to everyone uh, to the Career 360's uh, seminar on career options for students in maths. Um, maths is usually a subject which uh, uh, most students are a little worried about, but there is equally a large percentage of students who are passionate about the subject. And today, to answer those questions of students who want to take up careers in maths, we have with us a very, very uh, popular figure and a very, very, uh, uh, you know, influencer, I should say, you know, in the, in the educational uh, scenes. And his name is uh, Dr. Rajiva Karandikar. It's always good to talk to students. And uh, I had done this uh, two years ago. So I'm glad uh, that they've asked me again this year. So uh, as was mentioned by Gauri, I mean, mathematics to begin with in school years, it has uh, two very diverse reactions. One, uh, students want to get rid of it as soon as they can, large number. And there is a not a large, but a fairly good proportion who want to pursue mathematics. Okay? And the reasons may differ person to person in this short thing, I'm not going to go on talking about that. But this has been so for for, uh, for ages from the time I was a school student, it is now 50 years since I ended my schooling. Uh, but it's always been a question for this small group of students, as a small as a percentage in absolute number, any percentage in India is a large person, but is a large number, but a small percent of students, what should they do? because of their mathematical talent. This has been a question that remains so today. And that is what I'm going to try to address uh, briefly in the initial thing and then a detailed one when you have a question answer session. Uh, so, okay. So uh, instead of going to very early era, let me go only to the, what I call pre-1990 era. And I'll say a few words on why I've chosen 1990. But in previous to 1990s, uh, primarily the academic career for such uh, for, for the career option for such mathematically talented students used to be either do a MSc and PhD and then followed by academic teaching and research. This has been a very good option. For example, I chose it, but uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea. And uh, if you tell students that, you know, this is the only choice, then maybe you are not so interested. Okay doesn't mean nobody should take it. Those who are in love with it should do it. But I'm not going to talk about that today. Then the other option such as a position in the civil service. So you take a shot at civil service or uh, banking jobs. Uh, banking jobs have also been there. Maybe at the time of independence, it was not there. But by the time I was in school, it was already known that mathematically good students could take up a bank job. Okay by writing exams and so on. Many of our, my, my contemporaries did do that. And for most students, it was choice of BE or BTEC, that is engineering degree, that is a, as what can be called a safe option, keeping in mind job potential. Okay. Uh, add to that, uh, you may say pressure from parents, pressure from society and all that. So that has been so, it was so 50 years ago. And it has, this second, this last part has stayed on till now. Uh, what has changed, and I'm going to be talking about that is, uh, these, amongst those who are interested in maths, uh, what happens to those who do not want to do BE or BTEC like me? What choices do they have? This is not to me, not to say that BE and BTEC is not a good choice. No, it is a good choice. But not everybody falls in the same boat. So not everybody is interested in doing it. For example, I could not do any kind of drawing. And in our time, any engineering thing, the very first year you had to do this drawing and so on and so forth. And that had a huge thing. So for me, that was decided that no, I can't do drawing. I'm not going to do engineering. But okay. Uh, all right. So now let's move on to 1990s. So, so from in the 10 year period, 1990 to 2000, a few things happened. Already by 1990, uh, programming and computers, etc., were at least known, if not available easily. For example, in my master's program at ISI, as late as, as early as uh, uh, 
uh, we had a computer programming uh, course, Fortran, and we could actually write a program which could be run on a computer. Not ourselves, but we had to give it to somebody who would run it and give us a, a very few places in India, maybe one IIT or two IITs and ISI were the only places which had access to computers. Others did not have, not all, even all IITs did not have. Already by 1990, we had come a long way. Uh, academic institutions, at least several premier ones, uh, had computers that students could uh, run their programs. So, in larger number of people are getting familiar with computer programming. Uh, and few other things changed. So, until 1990, Indian industry was least interested in interacting with academic fraternity. Because anyway, it was seller's market, whatever is their cost, they can pass it on to the consumer. So if you try to look at costs of popular objects at that time, let's say something like a, uh, a two-wheeler, scooter, as we used to call it. Today, it is not much used as a word, but scooters. The, you try to get some data on uh, the cost of a scooter as com and comparing it with, the, let's say, salary of a beginning job in academics or beginning job in a bank. Okay. Also look at waiting time. Now today's kids are, don't know what is the waiting time. You want something, you pay for it, you get it. But in those days you had to apply for it and then wait and waiting time, you will not believe it, but it was seven years and more for a two wheeler. Okay. Because it was a license quota permit Raj to make scooters. You need a license. You need a permit and you won't only limited people have that. So number of scooters is limited anyway. So <clears throat> in 1990s, because of the economic uh, climate and economic pressure that India was under, they were forced to change the license quota permit thing and became economic liberalization. Slowly industry understood that it is not seller's market. Even if it is today, slowly it will go down and more players will enter the picture and therefore they were increasingly uh, looking at cutting costs, improving uh, production and so on. And all that requires um, some technicalities. Um, you can say mathematics in a very general term, but technicalities. So the industry had started increasing their interest slowly. Okay. But in this year, 10 year period, one could already notice such things happening. So from 1984, I had been a faculty at uh, a faculty member at Indian Statistical Institute, Delhi. And uh, uh, till something like 94, 95, I was not even aware of anybody from industry walking in just like that to make some inquiries that can they get some help from uh, the mathematics or statistics people at ISI. Only quality control is one area which has had a, a impact with statistics and interaction and ISI was leader in that. So that was there. But other than quality control, there was none. And already this started happening. Not that we could solve all problems. Sometimes the problem, the, the wish list is something which cannot be addressed, but industry was becoming aware. Okay. Uh, Software industry was growing and needed more and more trained software engineers. They were not developing anything for Indian market in by 2000 much for Indian market. It was all for export or to train people so that they can go abroad and do outsourcing jobs and for the company as well as for themselves make money. That was the game in 1990s to 2000. Uh, and Already increasingly, Indian students who are going to US for higher studies were turning to industry jobs. So that trend has been there before 1990 already, but that for that to happen, they had to go to the West. Uh, after 1990, it started increasing and by 2000, it was very much set in. Okay. So industry, as I said, uh, looking for talent, other than engineers, they're looking for engineers always. Engineers always had jobs. But even for engineers, they're looking for different skills and they were willing to look at non-engineers. Traditionally, it was belief in India that, you know, 
uh, you want to hire anybody he has to have be an at least an engineer bsc etc was not a acceptable career in those days even now you are next to fight but it is now acceptable okay the interplay with industry increasingly uh, happening started with statistics students first because they had immediate application to economics and finance so minimizing cost or maximizing profit uh, and share markets and so on and so forth these were the early ones in industry which had a mm, quick turn around with a uh, impact with uh, interplay with statistics and mathematics for other things it has been there but uh, the route was more circuitous or longer time and uh, students uh, had to spend a lot of time learning other things before they could make an impact so that's why i have picked up economics and finance as two themes so by 2000 already uh, i mean i was still at iss on the faculty and iss students with the m stat as it is called masters in statistics they were in high demand okay uh, and uh, elsewhere too not just iss but iss had first hand information but in general statistics students uh, were in high demand by 2000 the trend changed and larger mathematical talent was also sought after because what people realized is that even if if somebody is mathematically talented and if the mind is fine if if, if the attitude wise is okay then whatever else you need it may be statistics it may be uh, uh, computing even if they don't have background they can pick it up very fast or it could be something going beyond these things something unknown to the students also but they have to study that understand that and do it okay so uh that is what was looking looked up by the industry so see i am telling mathematical talent and i am not saying a mathematics degree so just somebody with a bsc or msc degree is no assurance that they will get a good job even that continues even today because unfortunately most courses even at a very good places uh train students only for doing academics in pursuit as a pursuit of maths they don't prepare them for other things so uh, you know uh, definition theorem proof and uh, quickly either mugging it up which is a bad way of doing it or understanding and then trying to do it is a very good way of doing it that is what is seen at the beginning and the end of mathematics but if you keep your eye and ear open and you are willing to look at some problem then uh, mathematical training is going to take you a long way and that increasingly in the industry started understanding and <clears throat> so they were in the need however most students continue to choose be btech as a safe option keeping in mind job potential but compared to prior to 1990s uh, increasingly more students started taking up statistics mathematics as options a brief uh, go in the past so i chose to pursue uh, bsc as opposed to engineering in almost 50 years ago 1973 and when i told people that you know i could get admission to the engineering college but i chose not to go so people either thought that either i am stupid or i am telling a lie there was no other third option in the minds of people okay how why would anybody who has engineering degree uh, uh, admission choose not to go there and do bsc okay as i said that trend remained but increasingly uh, this number of people making these choices has gone on to increase and again it is related to what do you get by doing a bsc and pursuing maths what what can you do apart from academics academics choice has always been there and that kept increasing and that is what is making uh, increasing number of students pursue this okay. at this point i would also like to add that not everybody who, who does not get a admission to a good engineering college by itself mean that they are uh, they are done in for they don't have any hope remaining no after all that is one path good path but that is one path there are alternate paths in fact today we live in a world where uh, why just only mathematics almost anything if you 
focus on it excel in it and put in your mind and in generally speaking you will get success more or less how much money all that will depend on what area one is talking about uh, what are your breaks luck etc etc but options are there you have to hit hard so what you should do as a mathematics student i will come in a few minutes i am not having a long speech on this uh so here is one important point i want to talk one should not take mathematics training or mathematics coaching or that one gets or mathematic coursework that one does as an end point in itself but we can we should think about it as it is one way that trains our minds that is students mind for logical thinking this is a must for any kind of industrial job you are not going to be posed a question which is you open up a textbook somewhere and it is answer there you have to go and implement that answer rare you have to understand what the question is what the problem is uh, what are your choices uh, so what is the objective what is the available information what additional information you can obtain and then uh, what kind of analytical tools you can put to get this information and lead to the objective now i have chosen this phrases in such a way that it is very close to uh, what what is the result you want to prove what is what is given and then what is the method of proof that is what all math courses train you to all to do now you if you think about theorem proof as a way of looking at this okay what is the objective what is the available information can you get additional information it's like what is available in textbooks for our proof and if not can what extra you can do okay if you look at it that way that is hot a uh, whole lot of applications of mathematics to real world problems can be dealt with if you don't know it you may need to read some more re relevant mathematics if you don't know the appropriate thing in the domain you need to understand that domain you read that and figure out but finally put down everything into these three categories what is the objective what is the available information what additional information you can obtain and what are the analytical tools you have do you need to develop more analytical tools so i do i mean i because of my age and uh, seniority or whatever uh, you may say i appear in interviews for jobs in industry for academics and on and on and on for years often you ask something and students say sir i don't know I, it was not in our course or i left it as an option i didn't study it later i tell students and uh, other students who might talk like today before they go up for interview i tell them even if that is so that either it is not in your course or even if it was you did not study don't answer it like that you say that for you give a reason that for whatever reason you can give any reason any of these two or any other reason that perhaps uh, it's not up to you you can't really answer your question but i know it's a mathematical question i know where to look for it i will study it and be able to answer it somewhere like that now again if it's academic position this may not cut much so you have to cook suitably change it and if it's a industry job this answer is good enough okay so as i said once again don't think of a mathematics coaching or course or whatever is done as a end point that whatever maths ho gaya bsc kiya hai ya msc kiya hai jab tak wo padhaya hai that is the end of it now i am going to just use it be it for teaching or be it for industry or be it for anything else this is all i have no this is the beginning what you have been taught is you have been taught how to understand given information logical thinking okay if you go with this attitude there is no end point you can just go on and on depends on how much efforts you can put in and some lucky breaks you need to be able to be able to do it good problems have to come to you also okay so a good lucky break but just lucky break will not do it if you are not committed uh lucky break won't do it all right so now let's move a little bit further current times starting in 2010 this phrase data science entered the scene what is data science now one way uh, easiest way of saying what is data science is old wine in new bottle so put mathematics statistics and computer science put mix them in a certain way make a new 
concoction and put it in a bottle and call it data science. That is one way of looking at it. More important than understanding what is data science is what it has done and why is it that it has made such a big impact. So, uh, by the way, my talking includes statistics and statistics for me is part of mathematics. Okay. So, you shouldn't be thinking that why am I talking about statistics? This is a career math career talk and not statistics. Even if you are not say, say, studied statistics and in some course, in an in interview you are asked, you can say, well, till now I have refrained from studying statistics, but not an issue. I will pick it up. That's it. Okay. So, give up this hang up that it is not part of mathematics. It's a separate subject. After all, it has a separate department in the university. There is a separate MSc and all that. All this is uh, given. Whole lot of use of mathematics in real world applications. I'm not saying all, but a major chunk of it, in some way or the other, statistics or statistical ideas come in. Not necessarily statistics as taught to your statistics friends or as taught in a statistics course or from a book. Statistical ideas. So, and why 2010? What is it that had changed by 2010? Why didn't data science enter in 1990? Well, by 2010, computing power had increased enormously. A uh, whole lot of things, the, naturally the data was available and available in electronic form. In the olden days, even when data is available, it is available in somewhere, it is written on pieces of paper. I myself de dealt with a scenario which had to do with a, a certain thing to do with railways and electricity boards and coal. And I was told there is sampling and I had to really look at what is it that they were doing. So I actually went, and this is as late as 2000. So I'm not talking of ancient time, 2000, 20 years ago. I went, uh, I flew to Bilaspur, or to Raipur to go to Bilaspur to reach a mine where they were doing the sampling and writing the data, etc. It was tons of pages. So it was like registers. Every register, one day they are writing their observations and on and on and on. So while data was available for for 30 years, if I have to do anything with that data, they'll hand me over a register. Now it can be done, but it is time consuming and there could be errors and all kinds of issues were there. So data was there and importance of data in decision making has been there at least 150 years. But how to do it? I could teach what to do, but I couldn't do it myself. Okay. By 2010, data is available in electronic format largely. Uh, computing power is available and you have manpower available who has been trained into programming. Incidentally, I like to do my own programming. I, I find it as a nice, interesting uh, way of doing, spending my time. And I've been able to solve issues which I couldn't have done otherwise. If I, if, if I were relying on uh, giving the problem to somebody else before the, and then taking back the feedback, it would have taken longer. But I'm not talking about that today, but okay. So uh, data science entered and that has changed. A huge amount of data available, whole lot of applications possible. And whenever such a thing, you need manpower of people who will be doing it. And therefore, uh, the uh, job market for MSc statistics students really zoomed up. And it is, I mean, it's, people are finding it very difficult to recruit faculty for uh, course teaching statistics courses. And not just today, 20, 30 years in India. I'm not saying you don't get them, but there are very few good ones that you would like to hire. So those who want to take the job, the institute don't want to hire them. And those the institute wants to hire, they have got a much better job in industry. So, but so few closing remarks about uh, what you should be looking for in your mathematics uh, uh, studies so that you have a good shot at careers. So firstly, you should be Aware that bright career awaits you. I've met a large number of students. Anytime I talk to them, they would say, oh, but I, I was not admitted to IIT, so perhaps I am no good. So if you are admitted to IIT to a desired program, well and good, you're great. If not, still good or even great. So one has to have that attitude. 
because after all every exam has there are these limitations from the other side too i am not saying that they don't want to take the best student but how to pick the best student is not clear so just because somebody did not crack an exam does not mean the person is no good okay first off so um, and good or bad is not the point at that point of time were you trained or not you nothing prevents you from training later nobody is going to look for you later that no no when you finished your schooling uh, what happened time has elapsed so by putting in efforts you can make up whatever gap is there so bright career awaits you merely repeating what i said earlier merely learning and understanding definitions theorems proof will not give you a way to a exciting job other than in academics when you want to go beyond academics the you should be aware of other things that i have talked about uh remember even if somebody has a, uh, uh, advertised to recruit mathematicians for an industry position and they hire a mathematician the mathematician will never be given that okay here is a equation you want to solve so can you solve it if somebody can uh, formulate their question or uh, object of interest as a mathematical equation they will be able to solve it also so nobody will give you a problem in that format so you have to understand the problem what is it they want to do so uh, they they want to so paper making mill so they make paper is uh, paper is cut in, uh, made in a very in certain format let's say in a large sheets and now you want to cut the paper so that the buyer can buy them so buyer is another industry maybe a uh, newspaper or uh, they want a large sheet but let's say somebody who makes textbooks somebody who makes copy books uh somebody who makes uh, uh, <clears throat> receipts all of them want paper of a different size okay and they have different orders and the paper maker need to how do you cut so you can't make take a large sheet just cut one thing somewhere give it to the required thing and then throw away the rest no you would like to make maximum number of cuts how do you manage that that's a mathematical question something that somebody had dealt, asked me in the 90s so therefore i know that industry is looking for such question not a see mathematics wise it doesn't require a big skill but whatever little idea you can do and improve on a standard solution it improves even if you can improve something by 5% in the profit it can make a big chunk difference anyway so main thing as i say is attitude and willingness to understand a problem and apply your ideas think about mathematical training as a way of uh, un- logical thinking logical reasoning and up uh, up your uh, at a question okay and i'll just add one more comment and then i'll open up for questions uh, there is as i said there is a huge demand for data science and whole lot of people are posing as data scientists and taking up positions which is fine uh, but uh, one has to have the right approach towards data science large number of people just think of data science as just being able to apply a formula so they have they are given some data they have to do some processing uh, by some tool which is now a data science tool as opposed to some other tool which they were using earlier but data science is lot more than that you have to understand the domain you have to understand not everybody if a 100 member team it's a important problem for which say 100 member team is there 95% of the team this is good enough what tools are available and how do you work with them 5% of people will need to understand a little bit more and especially troubleshooting if something is uh, uh, if you get a an answer you have to be able to understand is it a a uh, reasonably correct answer not correct answer and so on and so forth so uh, all these skills are important and uh, for that uh, the right attitude towards data science is also must i have written a lot about it today's lecture is a short one on this part but even in this year uh, in current science i have written a long article about uh, data science uh, and statistical ideas and uh, anybody would like to get more information on any specific thing uh, you can ask now or here is my email address which anyway you can search on a website but 
write in the first i zoom to the first page here is my email id generally i do reply sometimes i may miss replying you can uh, remind me if you don't get a reply what are the specific courses that uh, they can take at uh, cmi at the chennai mathematical institute okay so uh, so uh, at, at the undergraduate level if your entry is for undergrad means after schooling the entry we have a program yes. which is uh, bsc maths okay it's called also there uh, actually it splits into two programs bsc math physics bsc math computer science so first semester is common and second semester then uh, onwards you have to make a choice for your what can be called a subsidiary co- program or whatever is it computer science or is it physics there are no quotas and it, you don't have to have a score up. once you are admitted to cmi and you are passing appropriately Uh, you uh, you can take either physics or computer science all can go for physics all can go for computer science there are no quotas no limits it's not that whatever you score higher you have to force to do that no not like that okay mm-hmm. that is for bsc for msc students uh, that is those who have undergrad elsewhere or at cmi for masters we have a msc mathematics traditionally we have msc computer science uh, which is quite different from what is uh, msc in engineering programs Okay. Uh, in the MSc Computer Science, there is a good component of what can be called theoretical computer science, okay, algorithms and uh, what not. And uh, 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 newer entry, four years ago, we have ent- uh, we have a program which is called MSc Data Science, which is aimed at industrial uh, positions. Okay. So these are our options at CMI. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I uh, this is a question which actually I had. Uh, okay. i was wondering and this is a question that comes to me because a uh, interaction with a lot of parents brings uh-huh. this question that most schools offer maths as a choice only to students who opt science and commerce right in class uh, 11 yes. but uh, a lot of schools are now offering for the humanities and art subjects as well so how does uh, studying this combination of uh, maths with humanities subjects how does it help a student in terms of higher education and you know job opportunities and career uh, prospects okay so uh, firstly uh, <clears throat> this bifurcations in india were far too rigid and uh, i am happy that this rigidity is decreasing a little at least in various places more options are available uh, how it improves is that now uh, you know uh, humanities even in something as linguistics okay uh, mm-hmm. there is a lot of interest in mathematical ideas mathematical thought and interplay with maths uh, when we are mm-hmm. analyzing writings of older uh, uh, famous figures and so on and so forth uh, mm-hmm. but overall i think mathematical see every domain even includes humanities what i call mm-hmm. logic what i call logical thinking okay mm-hmm. what is given and can you deduce the something from that that thing that training is the best in mathematicians next best is physics this training part okay and i think this training has a important role in any anything you want to study and use okay so uh, uh, and humanities see this bifurcation so humanities after doing humanities uh, what do you do you some you take up a civil service job or you take up a finance related thing you don't have to do commerce to do finance or you take up economics or uh, you take up uh, uh, whatever theme you take up there will be mathematical interplay and having math background will not do any harm it will do you not do good to anyone and everyone but to a large number it will be good and to begin with the training as a logical thinking that helps in everything that i have come across correct absolutely next uh, we have uh, shireen can you unmute yourself and ask your question shireen uh, yes uh, good evening sir so mm-hmm. my question is um, how do you think studying maths uh plays an overall uh, brain uh, plays a role in an in the, you know overall brain development of a child of, or of a student it depends on what phase of the student or child we are talking about okay uh, so uh the 
I think what I said about logical reasoning and logical thinking that goes right from I would say undergrad. I mean, right from primary school, uh, and goes on and on and on. There is no end to that. But at different phases in undergrad, it may play a different role. In uh, at, at, at primary, different role. In secondary, it may be a different role. As an undergraduate student, different role. Physics uh, masters is a different role. But uh, the importance of mathematics. So, so let me give an example that, uh, especially in the world today, all of us know what is a vaccine and why its importance and so on. Nobody needs to give a lecture on what is a vaccine or what is importance. And at least quite a few of you would have read about, you know, how is a vaccine chosen? How is it approved? How is it decided? Why was there delays? And all these issues. And there's a whole lot of mathematics behind it. There's a whole lot of uh, statistical ideas behind it. And uh, interestingly, uh, two days ago, we had a meeting in uh, CMI. Uh, uh, head of the data analytics uh, global data analytics uh, uh, team in related to uh, the COVID uh, vaccine of Pfizer, which is very successful, uh, and from the US, global. Interestingly, he is an Indian, he is a Tamilian. He, he was a student at ISI. I have taught him a course 25 years ago. And he went and did PhD and then chose to be in industry and he is there. And they have made a huge impact. And uh, so this I'm saying that the mathematics one studies where it will have an impact, you can't predict. Okay. So, uh, uh, and traditionally mathematical ideas, I again don't say mathematics or statistics, but I'm focusing on ideas. They have been very important for agriculture, very important for uh, 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 for uh, weather management, weather prediction, weather analysis, and understanding, uh, and so on and so forth. So, correct, correct. Uh, our next question is from uh, Malkandeshwar. Go ahead. Yes. Alam, 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 sir. Yes. Good answer. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead with your question. Sir, I'm asking you to the sir. Is there any job opportunity to, uh, if you if, if you have studied the mathematics as a main subject? No, uh, job opportunity if you have studied mathematics subject at what level? Sir, uh, in IIT level. IIT level, but uh, under undergrad, I, I, uh, as a part of my, um, the BTEC program or as part of a. Must I mean, see, job opportunities are there, but what to give any specific answer or give directions, I need a little more detail. So at IIT, uh, if you have done a BSc maths, a uh, master's in maths there, BSMS math or something like that? No, sir. Uh, I, uh, I have to go to somewhat uh, BTEC, sir. BTEC. So, uh. okay. So, so, Will, so then what is your question is maths does the maths that you study will have a role in your job is that your question sir um, i'm interested in mathematics sir uh, and uh, i have to study mathematics in uh, the side part of this sir. you see uh very difficult to answer so the uh most iit students when they go for a job whatever they do maths is playing a big role Whatever they do, okay. 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 In what way is difficult to answer, and whether what you study during your IIT courses will exactly have an impact on what you will do? Probably yes. Probably no. Okay, sir. Okay, because uh, uh, you think about once again, you think about your engineering and mathematics training as a way of training your mind how to learn new things. Okay, sir. Okay. Then okay, opportunities definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you. Sir. Continue, continue, Doctor Karan. So uh, the the point is uh, one thing which IIT gives you is it gives you a good, big, very good brand value, brand equity. Okay. Ah, then okay. A, a employee says, "Okay, IIT. That means you have passed a primary cutoff because you know you are admitted to IIT, so your level is high enough. You got reasonable training. You had a very good peer group." And so on and so forth. 
So a whole lot of plus points already come into your bag. Now, next is how you utilize them. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question uh, is from Sayoni. Uh-huh. Sayoni, can you unmute yourself? Hello. Sayoni, uh, yeah. Am I audible? Your... Yes, yes, you are. Okay. Good evening, sir. Sir, my question was that how to become a data analyst, or if you are a statistics student, then what should be your approach? I mean, uh, passing a character like uh, uh, career in statistics, what should be your approach if you are a BSc student? Okay. All right. So, so, so from here, I understand. I, I can conclude that you are a BSc student in statistics, and from your pronunciation, you are a Bengali, and in Calcutta, you are studying. Is that correct? Right. Right. Okay. Absolutely, sir. But not, not kindly. I am, I am, I am an aspirant of statistics. Oh, you are aspirant of statistics. Okay. All right. Yes, yeah, sir. So, so, so one thing is that uh, the statistical tools and techniques, which are part of undergraduate courses, uh, Already at several places, they are under revision and they are adding or changing some things, but not at every place. So first of all, when you take up a program, you have to put your whole energy and efforts there and do the best you can understand everything from the coursework. But that is not the end point. Okay. So for a data analyst, any any theorem you are taught, okay, you try to think about it. Will it is there any? Can you relate it to any real world event or a, application? In today's world, a whole lot of information is available on the internet. Okay, so you are taught a theorem. You search about that theorem on the uh, starting with Wikipedia and then uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, whole uh, earlier where it was very difficult, you have to go to a library and scan through books and take forever. Now sitting at home, even in lockdown, sitting at home, you can track new things. So. If you follow, so for example, uh, uh, say uh, estimation theory in statistics, okay. So you search and find out what is it used for, okay. Sampling theory, uh, you see where it is used for. So understand that usage, then see if there are papers written on that, or there are some studies done on such using these tools and techniques. Uh, the sampling it will give you lead you to okay it is somewhat related to elections and election predictions incidentally uh, though i am a theoretician i have also extensively worked on the election domain and uh, more people know me as a cephalologist than they know me as a mathematician though my primary identity is mathematician i am okay so uh, so so try to connect whatever is being taught okay to some thing where you may potentially use it and if so as somebody else used it in what way they have used it understand that this may not be successful in every theorem that is taught to you no but even if 10 percent of what you are studying you can relate to something else that will give you a big plus okay other thing you have to understand is that uh, data is not the end point okay so the data science is not the truth, the whole truth or nothing but the truth even. Okay. So, uh, a short story again, that ages ago in the 90s, uh, you, you, you all may uh, re- have read here and there that uh, Sachin Tendulkar entered uh, cricket, uh, high, uh, uh, international cricket somewhere 89-90. And that was a little after that was also the time when uh, there was economic liberalization in India and stock markets uh, started booming. So all through 90s, uh, at least three occasions, four occasions, I wish I had taken screenshots, which was not a common thing to do in those days of the Times of India front page. They would do stories on relating uh, such in scores and uh, uh, stock market. And uh, as such, in scores were going up, stock markets were also going up for the reasons I explained. And uh, they were relating, oh, yet another century by Sachin snatch takes stock market zooms up and so on and so forth. 
on three times at least there was a story on front page on times of india so if you are a statistician you can laugh at it and you can see that this has nothing to do with it this is what is called nuisance correlation so uh, you have to have that kind of attitude uh, towards it so the right attitude if you look at uh, you uh, you will be able to do better than others who try to take a crack at uh, data science but if you don't have this attitude then learning statistics may not give you the give you the right uh, end point okay i hope you okay thank you thank you so much and uh, i think varadi uh, you have a few set some yeah. questions have come to you yeah right. go ahead so, okay. so one of the questions that has come to me is a uh, can you help us distinguish between uh, pure mathematics and applied mathematics and also is there a difference in the kind of career opportunities these two uh, streams bring about for the students okay all right so uh, this this phrase is pure unfortunately they have become uh, uh, hugely used and misused in india okay mm. uh, so much so that Uh, several people analyze a uh, call pure mathematics as something which does mathematics which has no interest to anybody outside mathematics world no interest with real world okay hmm. purely abstract okay uh, and applied mathematics as something which has applications that is one way of looking at it but uh, applied mathematics in india is seen by various people as uh, a theme which is which is a very narrow theme of uh, a certain kind of uh, mathematics okay uh, pdes and uh, related to pde and uh, something uh, so much so that this group does not include statistics as applied mathematics they don't include statistics as mathematics so mathematics is statistics is not applied mathematics according to this group so at right. some point i have even argued that one should not applied mathematics is a term in past tense so unless you have proven you show that it is applied you can't call it applied otherwise you call it applicable mathematics and people were angry at me using this word. so <laughs> misunderstanding these terms okay so yeah. in fact traditionally let's say number theory was one theme which was taken as the purest of the pure which has nothing to do with any real thing why should somebody be interested in whether something is a prime number or not a prime number and number of prime numbers and on and on in fact Uh, hardy which all of you most of you would have known was the mentor for uh, <coughs> ramanujam uh, uh, at one point he said that he is very glad that he works in area which has nothing to do with real world that is number theory but even hardy was proven wrong number theory plays a huge role in cryptography which in turn is playing a huge role in our lives because anything you do on internet which starts with password and so on so forth everything is to do with cryptography right sir so uh, therefore i think this is a artificial bifurcation of pure and applied maths uh, what may not have an application today it can be found later uh, but doing something or learning something just for the heck of it may be uh, not called applied math but applied math is something which has a sum the solving that question may have some remote chance of remote connect with something which may be uh, useful in real world maybe engineering maybe physics maybe biology maybe you know uh, you know in uh, uh, e economics or finance whatever let's okay. have a look at this bifurcation okay so uh, sir another question would be that uh, despite of the numerous known benefits of studying mathematics both in terms of the overall development of the student and also the uh, opportunities uh, studying mathematics bring a lot of students they don't opt for it in higher classes because of a certain maths phobia which lurks inside them so what do you think are the causes of a phobia like this and how can students overcome it okay so <laughs> i mean this is a long uh, answer on this but let me go to briefly give so the phobia starts early on hmm. okay and to a large extent the society at large and uh, often teachers who taught mathematics and in very large number of cases even parents hmm. are responsible okay so you think of it from a child's point of view A child is having difficulty with maths. The teacher scolds him that he is a bad boy. 
okay instead of trying to help and seeing why the and uh, at home mom or dad says oh other things i can help you maths i myself was no good i won't be able to help you don't ask me questions in maths now if a student as a childhood gets this feedback then the conclusion is that it is too bad i can't do anything about it you know so in a sense the phobia starts from the way society deals with such issues right from the early on okay what to do with it is uh, very difficult to answer quickly but uh, the i have had, uh, i have had students coming to cmi uh, you know school students occasionally we arrange all students from chennai they can come and meet mm-hmm. spend a day here and so on so forth so uh, some students ask me sir i got so eight, uh, 93% in maths in such and such class 11 class 10 uh, do you think i am good enough in math okay or do you think i should pursue maths and so on so i tell them that marks what you got is no neither here nor there okay whether you enjoy doing maths okay. mm-hmm. and or uh, some part of some kind of maths or whatever that is what you should look at and just because you get a bad score you should not get into phobia that oh this is not my cup of tea i won't be able to do it mm-hmm. if you don't get a good score you understand what went wrong and try to address that okay uh, that is one way but it, it, it's 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 there's no easy answer for this it's a lot of efforts needed from all fronts and it starts very early unfortunately right sir right thank you correct 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 uh, uh next question is uh, from komal uh-huh. hello sir hi so uh, i wanted to ask that uh, what are the career opportunities or possibilities for a student who is doing bsc in maths uh-huh. because uh, there's still uh, too many uncertainties around it because you know we are not told during our high school skills ke baad you know what are the next thing that you can do so yeah, yeah can you tell us yeah so firstly uh, after bsc uh, one thing to do one thing is that to really take a very good shot at a good job uh, and good in the sense of salary good in the sense of uh, impact you will have the good in the sense of various other parameters uh, uh, along with bsc if you can continue and do masters uh, that i would recommend strongly but if for whatever whatever reasons uh, societal family you are unable to do masters that's fine but if you can do it number one number two uh, lot of people are looking for people with good math background so uh, your math training is only for the courses you have done but your awareness you have to especially if you want to make a job sh- short at a job after bsc right away uh, and in general even after msc or whatever else you are doing your awareness should be uh, you know on more uh, aspects of math so let's say in most bsc programs the number theory may not be a course but now that you may know it already but now that you heard that number theory has some role in cryptography you may not know what is cryptography you don't know what is mathematics other number theory except you know that both of them have number theory is mathematics and crypto has a strong connect with mathematics so today's world it is fairly easy uh not your study time but your free time some free time you go and see a movie some you spend the time uh, listening to music or gossiping with friends some time you spend on understanding what are these areas that are supposedly related with maths but you have not done courses on uh, wikipedia you start there so increase your awareness so that let's say in a job someone says you know he needs somebody who understands cryptography you can say i do i have not done a course on it but i am reading about it and i am sure i will be able to make an impact things like that so lot of jobs are also related to do with some way or the other economics and finance with the industry so while doing bsc whatever else time you can spend on doing the learning of such things and remember uh reading about something uh and understanding what it is is much easier when it is not for a course when you don't have to write an exam on it 
when you have to do it as a course and an exam you are all even when you are learning something it's always on your mind okay what kind of questions on asked on it and this, that is how i should prepare so focus shifts uh but try to expand your horizon in and uh, by as wider range as you can and as you understand uh, that let's say you are doing some program some course in bsc and uh, you see that there are you understand that there may be some job opportunities in certain such areas read about them so each application there may not be too many jobs but just preparedness in this will help you okay, okay. Uh, i think komal uh, you have one more question do you have a question komal yeah yeah so uh, since you said that, that we need to read about it and explore more about it i think uh, for someone for the students who are pursuing bsc maths are there any uh, particular short term certification courses that they can do alongside with their bsc maths to add a more professional you know the professional background and professional value to their profile yeah so i mean one at, at the top since i am sitting in chennai though it is not in my institute but uh, iit chennai has now started a online program in data science which you can do parallelly while you are doing bsc okay and you will get a degree from iit as well if you uh, do all the requirements this is one very good quality online uh, parallel exams uh, parallel thing which you can pursue i don't know how much time it will take etc etc from your side but second thing i would like to add is that uh, see one problem with this uh, 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 professional uh, uh, degrees that you may be able to get or certification you may be able to get several of them are dubious they are in it only to make money okay. so for you to be able to shift through which are good and which are not so good so if you get advice from somebody who you can trust and do something it is fine but otherwise i would say pursue what i told you namely try to find about it from using internet and 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 perhaps even write down what you have learned not the whole thing but okay you about cryptography you learned a little bit on this 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 and this is the source and so on so forth. later for a interview you want to do a write up or in an interview you can say that you have followed up this you have followed up this you know people today are not looking at a certification but hiring in a job in an industry if you can convince the interview board that you know all this this is this, this or you are capable of learning this 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 is that is what they are looking for okay uh thank you so much uh thank you dr karandikar for your time sure. and uh, write me my question i can definitely ask. i was just going to say that that uh, you have shared your email id and uh, if all the questions that we have on our chatbot we will try and uh, send it to you so that we have sure. those answers sure Most thank sure. you so much uh, to our audience as well and uh, dr karandikar thank you so much for your time welcome welcome